Oh yeah. Old school running videos. Any of you have been watching my little channel for the last couple years. This should be reminiscent of my time in Taiwan. Recording with a nice little selfie stick to keep the camera stable and at a good viewing distance. I want to talk about some crazy... I want to tell you guys a story. So today's a nice little story. There won't be any crazy special effects or anything today. Probably just put this on, listen. You can watch the beautiful views of the Jean de Plante if you'd like. I wanted to just kind of share um, a, little bit, a little bit about what's been going on with me in a very honest way and just kind of like be genuine and, and sharing with you my journey here as a runner. So, got a little tale to tell. If this is your first time watching my channel, welcome. So just a short, short background. I'm a fairly experienced runner, running for like 15, 16 years, 249 marathon. I put in like a handful of 9, 800 mile weeks. And a uh, bachelor's degree in kinesiology, and that's kind of the short and sweet of it. But uh, so, so essentially I know, I'm, I'm fairly experienced, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. So, so that's why what happened this winter, the beginning of my tail, was really bizarre to me. So it all started in November. November 2019, before before all this stuff happened, all the pandemic-y stuff. Oh, just in case anyone's wondering, you do not have to wear masks in Paris if you're running or biking. So, I do have a mask in my pocket, though, for if I get on a bike or if I go into a crowded space, but I try to keep away from people. And the reason I'm sharing this little this little tale with you guys today is just because, well, I just want, I want people to know that, like, even if you're a fairly good, experienced runner, you still go through your ups and downs. It's not a perfect little journey. And I, I think that we all go through experiences and lessons that we can share. And so I'm not a professional runner yet, but I, but regardless of like kind of my, my status in the running world, I do think I can, I can uh, provide some advice and some guidance. And so hopefully um, if you're watching this out there and you happen to have the same problems that I am, that I was or that I am having, you don't have to go through what I went through for the last eight or nine months. All right, so that brings me to it. So, so it all started one, one fateful workout day in November. I was doing like 20 times, one minute on, one minute off, like a fart leg style. And it was going great, feeling good. The on bits were like 5.30 per mile. Oh no, it's not true. It was, I did that workout. Yeah, that's when it started. And then the next week, I did like a 5K tester workout where I ran hard, like all out for a mile at 5K pace. And for both of these workouts, I finished and my left calf was like super duper sore. <sighs> super duper sore, like and I didn't feel anything in my right. So it's kind of weird, I didn't really understand why. And then over the next few weeks, some more, some weirder stuff started happening. Like my right foot, I'd finish a run and my right foot would just be totally, totally bottomed out. Like the arch was super painful. I felt like my foot was collapsing. And then weeks, you know, I keep going because I don't really know what's going on. And I'm, I start doing different basic strength stuff, squats, lunges, whatever. And then, and then it comes where like, I'm used to jogging for 10, 11 miles, just this pace after work, at the end of my day, you know? And uh, like halfway through, like four or five miles, I, I notice that I'm running off balance, like off kilter, like this or something. And, and, I, and then I like, can't finish the runs or like I have to stop at like the slowest pace in the world. Like for me, I was like, maybe I'm used to running 720s or something, just on an easy day. And then on these run, these runs, like like an 8:30 pace would just 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 make me super tired, super uncomfortable, and I, I could tell there was something wrong, and I would just like have to stop and 
I got really frustrated one night. I remember so upset with myself because I didn't understand. And I, I was in the middle of the run, like three miles from my house. And I'm like, I had to stop because it was like so painful and it felt so weird. And I, I didn't know what was wrong. And I was so mad. I thought it was the shoes, so I like, didn't wear the shoes again. Anyways, so I, it, this went on for a few months, man. And like, I was doing all these exercises, squat jumps, jumping lunges, the lateral speed skater jumps. In my mind, I was like, okay, well, my right foot's hurting, the arch. So that means the arch is weak. I need to strengthen the arch. Right, reasonable conclusion. So I get to work on that doing like barefoot runs and stuff. I did some traveling, I went to Beijing, still running. Some days feeling great, thinking all the problems went away. Sometimes feeling terrible. Let's see, I saw, I saw, yeah, of course, and of course I saw professionals. Like I was like, oh, well maybe if I'm all feeling off balance, maybe my hips are off, or off balance. I should go see a chiropractor. So I saw, first I saw a PT, and he was like, your left psoas is, is really weak. I was like, okay, just that one. <laughs> and your, and he said something else too, like your right, I don't know, something about your right hip muscles and your right. I saw him for like 30 minutes, and he just wanted me to get out of his face. So I worked on that for a little bit. I was like, oh, it's getting better. That is it. And then, you know, lo and behold, it's hasn't improved after a few weeks. <sighs> Doing like, and when I say like I worked on it, this isn't like the, the, the physical therapist was like, you need to do training on this. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it every, every once a week or something. Guys, like, uh, he was like, do this one exercise where you lift up one leg at a time, lying down. And so I'm like, done. I like go to buy, I buy ankle weights, like up in the weight. You know, just like focusing on the muscle, doing exactly how to contract it, doing more than you know, like six different exercises for the left side, you know, except looking at research journals and, you know, I found like, what do ballerinas do to strengthen their psoas? And I was like, oh, it's a really cool exercise. Anyways, didn't work. I went to a chiropractor, I went to two chiropractors. They're both like, oh, your SI joints rotated out. I'm like, okay, well, it's kind of what I expected. Rotate it back. And then one night after, literally I went to a chiropractor. She did all the stuff. And then, and this is not my first time at a chiro. And generally, generally I love their services. And then 20 minutes, like I went from straight from the chiropractors on a bike to the track, caught myself on video. This is what I found. Don't know if you can tell, I am not running properly. So that, that led me to believe chiropractor's not gonna do anything for it. And so then I'm like emailing physical therapists in the US and then I was in Germany and then the, the pandemic started, the whole like February, March, and I was just like there, just there for months. And then I was still running, of course. I was there for like a few months. I was still training, but the training wasn't going well. And then I was like, well, maybe if I just run more, it'll fix itself, right? Because nothing I'm doing is working. And I'm supposed to be some sort of professional with this. So, and after like, I did like two or three two hour long runs in Germany, um, which we were allowed to do because was, I was in a part of Germany where the restrictions weren't very tight because it was super remote. And then I remember one day, the top of my, on my right foot, no arch pain, but a bone pain. My first metatarsal, that's your, your big toe bone. Just like a, like if I press on it, it hurts. And if I'm running on it, I can feel it, which that means that 
there's too much bone stress for whatever reason, which isn't good. If you've got bone stress and you can feel it when you're running, then that means that you're, you're close to a stress fracture. Or if you keep doing it, you're gonna get a stress fracture because I've had three. And that's what they feel like. You just, and like younger me, when I was like 16, 17, I was like, I gotta train through it. And then I to train through it at the point where you're taking aspirin just to be able to walk and stuff and you break the bone a little bit. So anyways, so I stopped running. I didn't, I was like, crap, bone problem. Took two weeks totally off, didn't run a step, barely walked, trying to just be really smart about it, you know, and I didn't, there was no reason to injure myself. Um, then after the two weeks, I started progressively increasing everything again, got really excited, putting stuff on a running schedule, but um, still going for runs and having it not feel right. And it's hard to really describe. It'd be similar to you're driving in your favorite car and you know exactly how it, how it goes, how it turns, how it handles, how the steering is, what the weight of it is, how deft it is to the corners. You just know how it, how it is. And then one day, it just starts like veering to the left or something. And it starts veering to the left and you, you don't know why. And no mechanic can figure it out. And you happen to be kind of like a licensed mechanic yourself, reasonably intelligent person. You can't figure out why you change, you change the tires. You do all this stuff and nothing's working. And after a while you start to lose your mind a little bit. And you have these videos where you can see the problem, but you still don't know. You see the problem, but you still don't know what's causing it. And so, and I know it sounds, I know it sounds crazy to like, to keep running, but like, if, if you were in my shoes and you'd run thousands and thousands and thousands of miles before through every possible running injury and pain and stuff you know like you would and this particular injury it's not uh, it's not disabling you from running it's just affecting your running wouldn't you kind of keep doing it too you know like you would try to fix it but like it seems ridiculous just to stop it completely if it's not uh, stopping your performance or it's not keeping you from doing it, it's just affecting it. So that's what I did and, you know, like, so now we're in March, April, May and slowly, slowly but surely increasing mileage and still not feeling 100%. The rhythm isn't quite there. Still running fast times. Sometimes, sometimes not. And for my birthday, now it's June, I'm running maybe 30, 40, eh, 40 miles a week. I'm like, you know, I want to figure this out. So why don't I give myself a birthday present? And I went to go see uh, supposedly a professional uh, biomechanics specialist, or I was paying for a, run, a complete running analysis of my form. Super excited. Oh, cool. It's so cool they have that here in Paris. Totally do it. A little expensive, like 80 euros for an hour. It's like, all right, cool. And I go, so excited, man. It's like, man, I can't wait to finally figure out what the problem is and have somebody help me. Because I don't have a coach, you know, it's just me. And so this is going on for months. I feel super alone. Um, and so I go see the guy and remember he puts me on a treadmill well, for, no, no, we spent 20 minutes talking about what shoes I was wearing. And he's like, so what shoes do you wear? And I'm like, on which day for what pace? You know, like, like if you've been in the game, you don't have one, for a while you don't have one pair of shoes. You've, you've got multiple pairs of shoes for different paces. So like, these are just trainers. 
for, for jagging, but I'm not going to run a tempo in these, nor would I ever do anything really quicker than six, seven minute mile pace in these because they're just too clunky. So, so, oh, you got different shoes, great. So then I spent like 20 minutes telling you different shoes, and after a while, I'm like, you know, can we like get to the good stuff? Like, I want to have this assessment, and in my, in my mind, he was going to put me on a treadmill, have different cameras, watching different angles, looking at hips, looking at there's people over here. In my mind, he was going to have me on a treadmill with different cameras, looking at my hips, looking at my shoulders, looking at my arm swing, looking at my foot strike, looking at everything, and then giving me an assessment. He puts me on the treadmill, pulls out his freaking iPhone, and just puts it down in the front and on the side and records me for a minute. And no warm up, nothing, just straight cold sitting on the treadmill. And then I'm like, and I myself brought two pairs of shoes and I'm like, do you wanna see what my form looks like in my racing flats? Considering that's where you do your fastest paced running, you know, and higher velocities will uh, bring out different, like, if you're used to running quicker, you're probably more economical at quicker speeds than slower speeds, right? Uh, it's like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks. So I put on the flats, go for it. Same thing, like iPhone assessment. Anyway, so I'm, I'm digressing here. So it was a really po nice person, poor assessment, really let me down, let my hopes down. The one thing he said was, he's like, well, you should, your cadence should be faster. Like, well, I'm on a treadmill, I'm wearing my clunker shoes, and I just started running, you know, I haven't even warmed up. And I'm like, my stri my cadence is always 180 steps a minute when I'm doing workouts, and sure enough, I mean, I can look back at any of my past races or hard workouts, it's straight up 180 steps a minute or more. Like, you know, it's just the way it is. So that was his assessment. Oh, run with lighter steps. I was like, thanks. So, again, you know, nothing, this is June, end of June, July, left to my own devices, no clear advice. So, I just start training more, doing all these exercises. I had done my own assessment on my, my muscles, like I'd done a uh, single-legged squat test and single-legged calf raises months ago, made a video about it, realized I was running more on one side, just so I... So I'm doing, you know, trying to strengthen my right calf, my right leg, my right arch, trying to use my left side more, keep my left arm down like this. And about two weeks ago now, I was at the point with my mileage where I could run doubles, but my right foot was like cripplingly painful to the point where I had to tape the arch. Under, like tape around it to literally mimic the arch support that I was not getting. So, me being stubborn, I start off the week and I'm running, doing doubles. I think in grand total for the week I'm like 50 miles a week, which is like a semblance of my former self. But what happened was, um, it was like the third, second or third day of doubles, and I remember my stride changed, my mechanics changed just a little bit because essentially the all the excessive running, especially if you're doing two runs a day, like you're kind of like pre-fatiguing the muscles. So like your first run of the day will feel goofy, but I remember like this second run, I felt my legs moving differently. I was like, oh, wow, interesting. And I had a, a shorter stride, it was choppier, like this maybe. But the rhythm was good. I was hitting. I was hitting a higher stride rate. My feet were landing relatively normal, whereas before, like my right foot, if you know in the video, my right foot was reaching. I didn't know why. So my my feet were landing normally. Uh, but well, with the, the biggest, biggest thing I, I not realized, but I, I felt like on a neuromuscular level was I was pushing from my glutes more and 
so instead of reaching forwards and over striding, I was landing and pushing instead of reaching, grabbing, pushing. And that the difference was, was profound. And I was super excited and I was like, I bit my arms up more to get more um, higher cadence. And I felt different. I was kind of running basically like this. I know it's hard to see with like a wide angle filter, but um, it's quicker. There's, uh, it's quicker. There's no reaching in front. My feet are landing under my center of mass. Um, and I was kind of pushing for my glutes a little bit. And then it kind of, it kind of dawned on me. It's over the last six, seven, eight months, it's not that I was, it's not that there was necessarily a muscle that was weaker. It was that I've been overstriding quite a bit and I didn't know it. And over time, from overstriding, then uh, these like important running muscles are becoming atrophied because I'm not using them as much anymore. So it's not a simple question of activating your glutes. If you're running without activating your glutes, you fall over, like you, you need your glutes in stance phase. It's just a question of maybe how much. So I realized this on like a Tuesday or Wednesday and in my, the rest of the week I was ecstatic. And I was really focusing on having this short, compact, like powerful stride instead of a long, lopey one. And so I'm a taller person, I'm like 6'2", so my natural tendency is to overstride. I worked on it years ago. Went from like a heel striker to mid or forefoot, but really getting a choppier step. And so, I mean, unfortunately the rest of the week, my foot was already in pain. It didn't get worse, but it certainly didn't get better. I was still taping it. And I finished out the week, able to run, okay. And I took some days off days off and so that leads me to now so here it is so here's kind of where the story culminates so the problem started with an off-balance stride with weird arm swing weird pains in my right foot soreness on my left leg muscle weaknesses I didn't know why and having to stop in the middle of runs and just not having my fluid powerful stride that I always had where you can just turn off and not think about it like I had to think about imagine having to like think about how you're walking for months like knowing you're walking with like a a kip in your in your gait but you but you don't know how to fix it like that's what I've been doing and I'm running so it used to be so natural but then I had to think about it anyway so what happened was for whatever reason I started overstriding. Could have been the shoes, could have been the surface. We'll talk about it in a minute, but and so from overstriding, from taking these bigger steps and not these kind of more compact power ones, like powerful ones like I'm doing right now. Um, uh, I started placing more force on my right foot. This guy, because it was reaching out instead of staying back, and I started stressing my left calf somehow, and I started also weakening probably my left and my right glute max and glute medius, your hip stabilizers. Uh, and so I've been, I was running like this for a week, and I realized that I feel as the problem was, so I started fixing it, started feeling better. But then, it was so funny, I was like, oh, it's great to have my stride back, but I'm running so slow. And then, I had the second and the last kind of little realization. So the last thing is, so sp speed is stride length times frequency. And so, I just discovered 
my stride frequency was a major culprit. So my stride length actually got shorter. And so for for like let's say aerobic paced effort, I was running 839 minute miles, which is significantly slower than what I'm used to running. And I hope there's no wind right now. I apologize if there is. So then the final, 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 the final piece, I fixed my stride length. And so now it's how do you get the power back? Your first thing, your first thought might be weight and plyometrics and stuff. I wouldn't say you're necessarily wrong, because that's what I did for months. But I think the key is having it be specific to running. A lunge, even a jumping lunge is fantastic, though it's not an exact movement to running on flat land, you know? It's way more vertical and it, it lacks the horizontal component. You need both. Because when you're an ideal running stride, you're at a 45 degree angle more or less each time, right? So then I was cruising, I think, Brad Hudson. Thank you, Brad Hudson, if you ever see this video. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hill repeats. And the particular point of the hill repeats, short, as fast as you can go with good form. And the little note I saw was if you tend to understride and shuffle, focus on big loping strides. Not me. If you tend to overstride, focus on shorter, choppier, more powerful steps up. That's me. And so that's what I did. And I've been doing hill repeats off and on for the last few months. Always feeling better after doing them, but I was overstriding on the hill repeats. I mean like, like huge, big, powerful strides, thinking that's what I needed to do because I felt myself shuffling. So what I've done for the last two weeks now, and this is two hill workout sessions a week on a super steep hill on grass, not on asphalt, because I can't find one on asphalt, but it's very, very steep. It takes about eight or nine seconds to run up it. And it's super, like I, I hit it hard and it's compact and I'm pulling from my gut and there's a knee lift, but I'm also exploding each foot. Like I'm popping off the ground. And so it's in the first, I remember the first session um, I did eight by hills with like three minute rest and it felt good. I felt really good. And the next day, my left glute medius was so sore, not as much as my right one. And I was like, oh, interesting. And there were some other muscles that were sore too, but that kind of tells me that's one of the key culprits. And so then I was doing research and it's like, well, if your glute medius is weak and it's not doing its job, then your tibialis posterior, the muscle of your arch, it goes underneath your arch and goes up your calf, that will take up the slack. So, so two times a week, I go back to this little hill that's a beautiful one. It's this park, um, kind of like in Bellevue, in the top part of Paris, northern part of Paris, and just throw myself up this hill. And this is—I did my four, my third session uh, two days ago. Awesome, already feeling more powerful. And what's happening is my stride length is getting longer. So, because I'm keeping the stride frequency, 180 steps a minute up the hill but I'm just really, really focusing on being powerful. And it's this combination where I'm driving from not just my glutes, but also from my calves. I'm popping off the ground, good arm swing, not over striding. And it's essentially like a, a muscle strength training workout in running form. And it's low, it's lower impact because you're actually going up and so they're your downwards force is much less. It's just relatively safe as long as you're as long as you're warmed up, you know. And oh, it's been so nice, you guys. Like 
I went out for a run yesterday and I felt so so fresh and like so strong. Like I could go out and I had good pop off the ground, good reaction force, good turnover. Um, I still have to think about how I'm moving, but it's like easier to maintain good form. And I feel myself running differently. Like it feels like my left leg is pulling back more and driving more and my right is pushing off more. And it just feels so, so fluid. Like I did a jog yesterday, ran to this park, did a lap at 6.55 pace. No problem. Like good, good, uh, strong efficiency, good, strong economy, which is what the hill repeats are going to work on. And I mean, for myself, like this is what I'm going to be doing for the next few months. Like it's like the hills are essentially strength training for muscle, uh, for stride length, excuse me. And I need to make sure it's good. And I need to make sure that it gets ingrained neuromuscularly because I've been the truth is I've had bad mechanics for the last, since November, you know, but it's okay. Like I've been running for such a long time. I think it'll come back to me sooner rather than later, but I just need to be careful. You know, make sure I have good form, make sure I'm staying light. And, and, and if I feel like a pain in my foot, then I just take the day off. You know, like I, I go swimming, I cross train, because what was happening the last few weeks, though I'm running better, my, uh, my tibialis posterior, my right, it's, well, it's, it's a tendon, you know, so it, it doesn't get as much blood flow as a muscle. And so, like it's, I can run without feeling it, but if I press on it sometimes, it's like really sore, so it's getting inflamed. So I need to be really careful. So if it feels inflamed, take a day off. It seems that like, if it gets to the point where I can't walk without pain, I take three days solid off, and then it goes away, which is good. So as this happens, I strengthen up, I'm um, strengthening all the, the running muscles, you know, the glutes and all that good stuff. But then I need to do the extra little therabandy exercises, you know, the, toe poles for the tib anterior and lateral, or excuse me, medial kind of, like internal external rotation exercises for the TheraBand just to strengthen it up and just give it time, you know, and don't push it. And that's it, man. That's my story. And I share this with you. So if you've got weird running pains, um, if you feel like you're overstriding, if you feel off balance, because in my months of Google searching, I'm not the only person who's felt like this. You know, try going out to, a, maybe try going out to a hill and running up it a couple times. And the key is have a good warm up before, pick a manageable hill at first, focus on really good form, being explosive, good, good arm swing, not too uh, open, but compact, you know, but having good strong upwards motion and Take a big rest, like two, three minutes between each, because you're training not just your your muscle power, but also your kind of like your neuromuscular efficiency, and that requires a rest between each bout. So this isn't a heart. You're not doing VO2 max training. This isn't about calories. It's purely about form, mechanics, and economy. And so you have to give yourself these little rests in between, once maybe twice a week. I can't even tell you how how nice it is. And it's it's cool to see all of it at once because now I can see how all of my my problems I found were were just symptoms but not the cause. But now I know the cause. And the truth is, you know, I may have had a variation of this overstriding for the last few years. Maybe. But I was able to train on it with no problems. And it only crept up once or twice in a marathon. So, you know, maybe this is just part of my body's mechanics, which is fine. But for me, it's important that I can run without thinking about it. Like I'm doing now, talking to you, telling you my tale. 
So, so yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Um, you know, like I said before, like if you're a coach out there or a professional physiotherapist or whatever, you know, I wish, or just somebody who's kind of like me, who's kind of solo training, I wish I'd had somebody tell me. Because I had people even say, are you sure it's not in your head? That doctor, the, the doctor, uh, that doctor who did this little running analysis of me with his iPhone, even hinted at that. He's like, are you sure you're not just, just focusing on it too much? <sighs> Drove me insane. It's like, you know, you're, I know my body well enough to know when there's a problem. So I would wish I'd had somebody who could have just said, oh, Jake, after your workout, oh, Jake, you're landing kind of goofy. Make sure you do hill repeats and you'll fix it up. Thanks. But now I know better. And now I can help people who come to me with problems like this in the future. And if you're watching this video, maybe I've already helped you. And that's, I think that's, that's, that's good enough, you know? So I hope, I hope you guys took something away from this. Basically, try not to overstride. Keep a good cadence. If you feel like you're not moving quick enough at a high cadence, you might be lacking muscle strength and power. Thus, something like hill repeats, or you could do plyometrics or whatever. And the, sorry, the last thing. So why did all this start? I think, my guess, is that I was wearing, this is my guess. I was running on harder surfaces, and I changed shoe types. Specifically, to a shoe type that was really cushy, really squishy, was really forgiving. Um, it had a low drop, like five millimeter heel toe drop. It's pretty high off the ground. And I think what happened was I couldn't feel the ground as much anymore by being so high. It was the Hoku Clifton's. And if you know the shoe, they're big and cushy, which is great, but. For me, for whatever reason, uh, over a few weeks or months or whatever, it, uh, I think it really affected my mechanics. And I wasn't feeling the ground. I wasn't getting the pop, you know, like, pew. And I started getting slower turnover. And that's how it progressed. So, those are just my thoughts. I don't know, it doesn't really matter at this point. I think a lot of times on social media, Everyone's telling a perfect story, perfect little fairy tale. And I just wanted to be, just wanted to share something authentic, you know? Try to bring some sort of authenticity to these social media posts and stuff. You know, I think, I think sometimes training videos and running videos or YouTube videos in general just are lacking a bit of authenticity. And that's what I want to make sure that I'm bringing on this channel because I want to maintain no matter how big or small the channel stays or grows, I want to make sure it's real, you know? Because that's, that's the whole point, bringing real information, real help from a real person, going through your life just like everybody else is, and uh, hopefully we can all help each other and learn and grow along the way, you know what I mean? All right, so I hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, this is, there wasn't going to be any special effects today some to talk and share. I'm probably not going to do any crazy editing on this. That's probably going to be a long video. But I hope I was able to give a little bit of insight and just be kind of genuine with you and my my journey and out of how my own progress has been. And just so you can follow me along a little bit and hopefully glean some help, some knowledge, and improve your own Prove yourselves in some way, you know? So, hope you enjoyed the today and the message. And please have fun training, be safe. Try to maintain social distancing and wear a mask if you have to, especially in crowded areas. And if you do want to contribute to the channel and support me directly, that would be lovely. I do have a Patreon account. And I've got cool little tiers and stuff. You can like it, like I've been sending out my, my weekly training in detail and kind of like why I'm doing what I'm doing with certain workouts and stuff. So I'll leave that link below and have a lovely day. See you guys.